So this is for, we won't need this probably for this session, okay. but that's for when we're like, okay, this big thing finished, what do you guys want to do next? You just put your mini on one of these options. Moment means take a moment. This is probably the most important part of the game, other than the dungeon delving. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. Um, because this structures the game. So moments are things to do whenever, but at least one must be done every rest. You don't get a point for doing them, you just have to do them. My experience with points is that they're bad. So, so you've stopped incentivizing, and instead uh, you're going to legislate. Yes, uh, the because <laughs> incentivizing, <laughs> it. incentivizing okay. produces behavior that games the system and <laughs> defeats the purpose and the spirit of what's being done. If you can just put bake it into the structure of the game, yeah. this like, is how the game is played. Yes, Do it. I think it will produce better results. Also, there's the thing of um, intrinsic and extrinsic motivations. If you have something that's intrinsically rewarding, like jumping as Mario, or just jumping, yeah, and, and then you start, <laughs> and then you start providing external rewards for it, you cease to take enjoyment in the activity itself and simply just grind it out to get the rewards. You're no longer jumping for jump's sake. I thought that was why we were here. You're jumping for jump's sake. Oh, okay. So it can actually diminish your enthusiasm for the activity that you're trying to incentivize. That's why we get paid to work, not to play. And then when you start trying to say, hey, I want to play video games as my job, like these it streamers becomes, and all that stuff, they hate their becomes, lives. They, they start enjoying games much less. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I... If ever. I feel that that's a lot of the problems that I've had. I've been trying to incentivize things that don't need to be incentivized, but they just need to be done some other way. So the object of the game is still my hang-up, which is to make a story happen. You have a story in mind for your character. Try to make that happen in the fictional world by taking action. It is a story game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you win the story. Uh, you win if the story of your character ends up satisfying to you. You should be playing to make it that way. The story you have in mind may change over time. It may be short or long. You lose if it doesn't end up satisfying for you. You should play to avoid this. No psychos. PCs must that act like real people. And you have to help other players win, too. Those are the rules, not the objects. Those are the three things. The object is to make sure it happens. Okay. No psychos. No psychos. Asa. <laughs> Stacy. No wonder he went to, no wonder he went to Disney. No wonder he went to Disney instead of playing with us. Yeah, that's fine. He's what is what is how about, psychos how, mean? I mean, don't make characters that are psychos. They're socio sociopaths. Uh, they want to kill and like rob know. and steal all the time. Yeah. Like, don't be a thirteen-year-old boy. That's uh -huh. what all thirteen-year-old boys do, except for Daniel. <laughs> Daniel was like, oh, guys, I grab a boo. <laughs> All right, what? Oh, recording. I didn't know recording. That's fine. Uh, so we have these moments, as in take a moment to Magic focus on something. So the primary one, the primary one is to is relief, i.e., to relieve a burden, your own or another's. And with all these moments, if you are just interested in your character or another person's character, you can be like, okay, let's uh, let's do this, and I want you to do yada yada yada. So you can do that for other characters if you're interested in it. Um, just like if you're watching a TV show and you're like, I wish they would show more about this guy. Wait, so so in our time where we're all choosing what we're doing here, and mm -hmm. I can say, I want a moment, but I want the moment to be that guy. Yeah. Because I'm interested in... I have a question about say. what's okay. the deal about this, or I want to see what he does about this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yada, yada. So relief is the primary one. It's the most action-y. Uh, it relieves a burden, specifically a burden. If you care about something, you should probably write it down as a burden. Right, if it's important enough to make you act in an interesting way, that it probably counts as a burden. Um, so we're constantly going to be looking back and reevaluating the burdens that you have written down to make sure the old ones are crossed off or changed and the new ones get added. Right? Okay. And there's no rule to them. There's no, there's no mechanical benefit to doing that. It's all just a tool to help you be interesting to yourself primarily and to others. Uh, so yeah, try to relieve a burden yourself, uh, your own or your others. This is the most important moment. Anything your character cares about, anything that moves to action is a burden. Relieving burdens drives the game. Think of it dramatically. Ariel, the beginning of The Little Mermaid. She wants to be part of the topside world, right? That's her burden. She doesn't know what she's going to do about that. That's not what a burden is. That's a plan. She just has the burden and then opportunity comes along and she goes after it. Okay. Um, yes, Disney is the most appropriate way to talk about D&D. &D. <laughs> just, uh, just look at Jordan Peterson. Uh, he talks about Disney all the time. Does he really? Oh, yeah. No. In order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. Uh -huh. All the time. Uh, so Pinocchio. The next one is bonding. 
uh, try to make relationship more or less intimate. Basically, it's just relationship building or unbuilding, whatever you want. You can conceive of those actions probably as burdens underlying that, but maybe you're not thinking of it in those terms at the moment. Like, I have a burden to want to get to know dude. Or you know the scene in uh, Fellowship of the Ring where they're camped out beneath Weathertop and Strider gives them the story of Baron and Luthien? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a bonding moment. I'll, I'll, like, if we were doing that in the game, it would just be like, uh, I think since it's a rest, you have to take a moment. So you have to do one of these things. And so you're, you're thinking, people are thinking about it and say, okay, maybe my character just tells a, a story like a myth that he heard. And maybe I ask you to make up something about it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And that would count as a bond, bonding moment. Or you just share a drink, anything like that. Revelation. That's the other one. Show, don't tell. What, oh, it could also be the thing is, if you especially hit, if you have the romantic burden, like you are looking for a romance, you're in a town, you see somebody, you'd be like, boom, I want to take a bonding moment. I want to try to start something with this uh, person, right? Or so you can also do this reactively, not just it's, it's a pause in the game, now we do this. You can also do these at any time, like I said, reactively. Revelation, show, don't tell why your character is the way he is. As, do this in the present or in the past through action, dialogue, flashback, or imagery. That's if you have something you've thought about your character and you want to show it to the, show it to the class, show and tell. Revelation is something you can do for that. The last thing, which is the default, which is new for us, is slice of life. So because these are mandated at certain intervals, I didn't want them to be lame and to us to be like just trying to think of something to fulfill the requirement. And if this were me mechanically incentivized, uh, just, you're just looking for points. So you pick something that doesn't really make sense dramatically. So slice of life is on there, especially because there is no mechanical inducement anymore. To let you have a pressure release valve, like if you can't think of anything that makes sense, like maybe you're just in the middle of a dungeon and it literally makes sense for you to be absolutely quiet, for nothing to go on, and everything that you know about your character is everything that's interesting to know, that's fine. So you can do a slice of life, which is basically kind of like... Um, a revelation or just a quick image of something in the environment or just what it's like to be your character in your party right now. You can be like, my, you can just focus on a physical sensory detail, like um, the way that the water pools around your feet in this dank dungeon or something like that. It's just something to like bring us into the fictional reality to okay, keep us anchored you're there. You're, or just, like, you're just doing a, a first person glimpse of where you're at. Or it's not a first person, and more like if you're watching a show, just some shot that would show what's going on right now and to give you some like clue into what the sense of it is as just being there a slice okay. of life that kind of thing so that's the pressure release valve that's the default if you can't think of anything do that or ask me to do it ask i mean because what what these will work like when you go on a rest i will uh, I, either y'all will roll or i'll appoint somebody say you're in charge of the moment and you can either delegate it to somebody else or do it yourself got it you can always ask for help or ideas if you're out of it. So that's how the moment system works. It's structure, it's not the same thing you have to gain. Roll tight. So let me talk to you quickly. We are in the king, this is the CCQ. <laughs> I don't have an intro. You do now. <laughs> are you gonna explain <laughs> what the CCQ is for the listeners and me? <laughs> I guess, did you read the timeline? Dude, I hadn't had a chance to read that one. Uh, there's a timeline. <laughs> you said it yesterday or today? Yeah, this morning. I just I was like, <laughs> what a filthy casual. I have, yeah. I had 60 people in my house today. Uh, that's fine. 60? 50, between 50 and 60. Yeah. Here's the deal. You guys are in an area called the Nine Kingdoms. It's in the south of this continent. You're in one of the northernmost of the Nine Kingdoms and the, 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 the gothern most, the most goth <laughs> the <Gothern? laughs> version the Gothern of the kingdoms. Everybody wears black here. The big situation is that in the it's all it's all humans here. This is a very low fantasy, right? But in the north, about I guess I think it's I'll have to check my notes, but I think it's like six hundred miles north in this wooded area, a elf goddess queen arose, right? Okay. And because of the history of this fictional setting, this is a huge deal, and people who are woke about it know that. If a bunch of gods start manifesting in the world and it's going to be a huge worldwide problem and it's going to be Sauron up in here, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they're just going to take over everything. Yeah, and, and, and the elven kind, they, they are otherworldly. Yeah, they, they, they're not... Elves, the purer they are, the bluer skin they have. Okay. Uh, so it's like, you know, like you see depictions of Hindu gods like and goddesses. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's like that. So you obviously know an elf when you see them. Half elves begin to have silverish coloration or splotchy coloration, and they have a whole like racial segregation hierarchy in they that area. They always do. They always do. It's tribalism. Lost mm -hmm. Anyway, you're saying that we should organize our societies along the lines of the lobsters. There are very few, if any, elves down here. Uh, you do hear a rumor that in the capital city of Sella, there is an elf uh, slave blacksmith who works for the king. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a big deal, but elves don't hang around here. They're up there and uh, she, in, the north. in the north in that forest. And the elf queen up there, the, the eponymous crepuscular queen. Cre crepuscular means active at dawn or twilight. Uh, means what? Active at dawn or twilight. Active at dawn or twilight. Like lots okay. of cats. Yep. Gotcha. That's right. Crepuscular. Crepuscular. That's a great word. That's did it. you make? You didn't make this. You made this up. Is this one of yours? Yeah. Is this one of yours? <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought because y'all mentioned it before. You mentioned it before CCQ, mm. but I thought it was a module. He's no. been talking about it a long time. Yeah. But we, we, y'all never. Played it is a module. It. It's a fictional we've, setting. We've played two sessions. Okay. But I've changed some things here and there. Okay. About okay. It. Cool. All right. Yeah, so in college, I was a big nerd, and I no. made up this entire mythology and language and all this stuff. I remember that. Yeah, and so this is 6,000 years in the future from that. Ah. So a ton of things have changed. So this is going off your book. So it's, of it's got, we've got made up languages, we've got history and mythology, we've got all kinds of stuff. But now it's all like changed, you can't, who knows? Who knows what's true anymore? <laughs> anyway. All right, cool. So this is a big deal. Uh, she's got, so a new goddess has appeared in the northern wooded lands of Yuzhaj. No one knows her name, but her land is now in a perpetual twilight, yet ever more fertile. Rumors say she's an elf of purest blood with four arms, giving birth to giants, blue as her own skin. Shadowy beasts stalk to the edge of the forest, but none harm her worshippers. And her twilight apostles go to all the earth with, to win converts and spy out her enemies. The next year, as she was pregnant with another giant, the Twilight Crusade began, and the Empire of Mankind, which was down here in the south, mm -hmm. made up of the Nine Kingdoms, but united in one political entity for this time, for only like the past 50 years, uh, moved in full theocratic strength to defeat the CCQ, and, but was totally wrecked. They thought that their god would deliver them, i.e. the spider goddess that you guys worship, or if you're a cleric or something. What's the name? Uh, we don't, you just call her My Lady, uh, but her name is... Is it something that we, that worshippers would potentially know? Yes. Okay. Yelly. Like Y E L I. Y E H L L I. Yelly. Okay. The spider queen. queen. Yep. He took the entire like church hierarchy and basically the pope with him up there. So they Who's were he? Gonna, uh, the emperor. Oh, okay. And they just got completely destroyed. The, the the equivalent of the pope got taken prisoner, and the cardinals and stuff got buried alive. So. Yeah, uh, took after the patriarch and buried the hierarchs alive beneath beautifully carved oaks. Her thing is beauty. Ev like, everything in the city, her city, uh -huh. is beautiful. Everything that is ugly is evil. So, that's, that's her thing. So, she hates orcs. I think I yeah. might become a convert. It's fine. <laughs> Although, I'm probably ugly to her. Maybe she's the good guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Are we the baddies? Are we the baddies? <laughs> uh, You're like a monster? This? Yeah, you want some of this? <laughs> Woo! It's gonna be wired up. <laughs> His heart's just gonna explode. Yeah. <laughs> we need to be moving, guys. <laughs> he just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so three years later, yeah, look at that. the empire has dissolved uh, because almost everyone with any power is dead. You don't have to drink it, Stacy. <laughs> drink it. Chug it. Chug it. Chug it. This one tastes like cough syrup. It's good at first, but it has an awful. Get you, get, get you a swig of that aftertaste. Get yes. you a big old thick swig. It's disgusting. Yeah. Get you a gulp of it. Maybe I'm just used to it. I can see where people would want to mix that with drinks, though. That's, oh, like yeah, alcohol, you mean? Yeah. That's, uh, uh, like Red Bull and vodka, that kind of thing? I would never idea. do that. I'd never do that. <laughs> yeah. Bad idea. I see people do that. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, I got this new uh, this new beer coffee thing. That's apparently popular. Beer coffee? Yeah. <gasps> Guinness. They make a Guinness ice cream. You can do that, too. Just... <laughs> Poor yeah, ice cream. Ice cream. Beer. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's. You don't have to. It's, yeah. It's. But well, why wouldn't you? And then you just basically got a float. Yeah. Yeah, that that's not a float. It's not a float. That sounds really gross. It is Guinness ice cream. They scoop it and put it in a black waffle cone. I bet that's good. What? No. You, now you're just talking about beer flavored ice cream. Yeah. It's but it's I, made with Guinness. Yeah, but probably very little. Eight cans. 
What is that's a carton? Is huh? A carton is maybe a, a serving. That's not what? not a <laughs> serving, but a but a but a. I don't know how much it makes. It's eight cans, and then they put in soft serve ice cream, mix it together, refreeze it, and then they scoop it out. Maybe. Awesome. <laughs> maybe it looks amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're three years later. And with the destruction of the Empire of Mankind and the capture of the Grand Patriarch and the Church Hierarchy, the political situation of the Southern peoples, that's us, reverted to an uneasy pre-imperial status with nine kingdoms separated by the thonic crevasses. That's all right. The South will rise again, boys. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, the thonic? Yeah, that means, well, that, It's actually not pronounced thonic. It's it, pronounced it's, thonic. It's just thonic? Yeah. Why do they have the CH there? It's just the way it is, baby. It's like C-H-T-H-O-N-I. What is, that? what is the origin? It's from Greek. What does thonic mean? Underworld? Yeah, like from oh. the underworld. Yeah. Oh, cool. I had to look Very cool. Or just underground. So, a thonic crevasse. Yeah. The other, the other cool thing that you can say is hypogea. Yeah, that, that, that's a hot, that's, <laughs> both of those words are very Lovecraftian. Yeah. Hypo, under, gea, uh, ground, earth. Ground, under the earth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bloodborne does, does that, the hypogean. Jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yep. We got grabbed by a Snatcher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Know, Good times. Yep. That was a big surprise. When that happened, <laughs> what is that? Where am I? What the hell's going on? You know, having played all the other games, like, that had never happened. Yeah. Well, actually, right. it does in Dark Souls. You oh. get captured by Seath. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but it's not like, I mean. You get hit over the head with a sack and then stuffed it but this, up. But this one was like. <laughs> This one was the most random thing. Yes. Like, duh, 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 duh. Hey, there's a crazy dude with a sack in the corner over there. And then he one shots you. He one shots you and then takes you. What? <laughs> Whereas this was like, I'm gonna fight a boss. Oh, I just got one shotted, understandably, by this boss. And you wake up in this jail and it's like, where, where, yeah. where the crap am I? It's a lot scarier in Bloodborne, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, it's so three years later, blah, blah, blah. Nine kingdoms now, which is the pre imperial status. Mm-hmm separated by those huge crevasses and because there are huge crevasses around you can see the map you obviously wouldn't be able to escape from your central territory if you were there so in the intervening millennia like that that happened six thousand years ago when those crevasses appeared Mm -hmm. so in the meantime there's bridges built over them all and there's forts along Mm -hmm. the edges and this kind of thing so you can pass by them but they still are really handy kingdom markers for boundaries uh crevasses and the threat of the crepuscular queen is ever present in the north so all the PCs are from one of these nine kingdoms, the one up north, the Goth Kingdom, Kavaria. Uh, it's mountainous on the eastern side. And you guys are all from here. We're in a particular county, the county of Saxtisa. And we will re- begin play On the Road. On the Road again. Cue Willie Nelson. I really think you should give another synopsis when we actually start recording when you from the we, we, show we and, and do it like in huh? That's what you just did. That's for the it's show. Re- it's recording. We've been recording. Oh, it's like I thought hour. you were just recording it, but we hadn't actually started oh, the oh, show, no. the podcast. I'll fix it in post. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it's all real. It's all happening. Okay. Did you know? Read. Fix it in post. Did you know? That's what I do. I just fix everything in post. You want to go get tacos? Well, let, let's just. So. We haven't played anything yet. No, we. I mean, yeah, if, it, if we don't go, I mean, if, if we want that, we have to go now. They're going to sell out. Are they going to close? Yeah, they'll they'll sell out quickly. Okay, well, let me finish wrapping up, and we'll get. Okay, we'll zoom in on us. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with not getting chicken tacos. I want chicken tacos. Yeah. Okay. We haven't started playing yet. Yes, we did. This all counts. This is all set. This isn't playing. <laughs> all right, so. All of us here, we've, we've got three now. Probably John will join us in a bit. We've got Tim. Hey, yep, I'm here. Stacy. Hola. And Jim. Hey. Do we, do we need to talk about our characters? No. We'll, Show, see, we'll so see our characters. I have a backstory written for my character. Do you really? No. Good. Oh. <laughs> Wait, kind of? That's fine. Kind of is Roughly, fine. Roughly? Uh-huh. That's good. You just need a, sort of a backstory. That's right. the ideal for starting a game. I'll improv one real quick. On a cold and rainy No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Let's not do that. Wrong. <laughs> oh, no, oh. no, What's the no, point no. of time? So we are starting. This is, a, although it may seem to have many hippie features, like moments, pre- precious moments that you take. Really, you this is... precious moments. <laughs> <laughs> this funny. is a D&D game. It just doesn't use most D&D rules, but it's basically D&D. So all the player characters have some reason they need to go get dungeon cash. 
That's the quick, that's the get rich quick scheme for our setting. And so all these guys need money for some reason, and we will see in time and times and half a time why they do need this money and what they're all about. Uh, we've got, what classes do we have? We've got bounty hunter? Bounty hunter. Wizard. I am a thief. Okay, so we've got a bounty hunter, a wizard, and a thief on the road. You guys are going on the road to Saxtisa, to the county capital, where there is a castle there. And guys, I have, I have, um, I have photos. Do you want to see? Handouts. Media. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. And it's a beautiful image, although it's compressed for some reason here. This is the ruins of it now, like IRL. Mm -hmm. So you see the castle is up high on the hill and there's a town down below to the left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An overview of what the castle ruins look like. Nice. And this is a reconstruction of what it looks like right now in the game. Ooh. So and that's in our 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 that's the, yeah that's the capital city of the county that you're in the county of Sextisa city of Sextisa Countess Sextisa rules there okay she's got three barons under her if some of the character backgrounds reference that baron I think mm -hmm. Aquila is his name you know you're planning on stopping in a village called Therion up next but before that happens. An event on the road occurs. We see you boys going through, and let's take a quick camera pan. What do you guys look like? We should have your aesthetics written down. You see a, a, a rather short, wiry individual who's got a hood, wearing a hood and a cloak. And he's got, and he's sitting by, you say, we are, are we camping right now? You said? No, you're walking on the road. Oh, we're walking on the road. And he's just, he's got his chest puffed out a little bit. He's got a little bit of a swagger to him. What's your loadout? That's like cool. Uh, I just got a sword and shield and a hand crossbow. That'll work. All right. I'm and glad Tim's sitting close to the mic. He's pretty quiet today, so. <laughs> okay. Always uh. criticism. <laughs> this is not a safe place. He's like, <laughs> guys, uh, 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 I'm talking uh, to NPR and I'm Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see Saturn? He. Uh, oh, yeah. What's your character's name, Jim? Count oh, Canis. Canis? You gotta say Canis or I'm gonna be triggered. <laughs> Canis! <laughs> I don't wanna say Canis. You can say Canis. Canis do nothing. That's it, actually... It's, his name's Canis, but anytime anyone reads it, it's Canis. I'm actually... <laughs> and he's triggered. It's funny, but that's actually the way they would pronounce it in this uh, kingdom. It's Canis. Oh. The initial... You know. The initial... You know about lore. <laughs> the initial <laughs> ah sound has morphed to uh, a short A, like in English. I'm glad that you figured that out. That's real. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Listen, guys, I used a set of algorithms <laughs> to change the pronunciation of words from my original circa 2002 language to simulate drift over 6,000 years. <laughs> That's, That's why you're Saturn and not Saturn. Actually, I'm Saturn. <laughs> wait, actually, no, wait, am I Saturn or Saturn? No, Saturn. These. Canis. Now, most of your Canis. names. Okay, listen. Can. Most of your names here are not actual names in that language. They're just, you know, Greek and Roman names that mm -hmm. are meant to simulate the sort of feel yeah. that it would have. Also, so you don't have to say a bunch of nonsense all the time. You can just say a real name. Mm -hmm. I find that's easier. Go ahead. <laughs> Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, You're like, oh, it's actually pronounced. <laughs> So how obese can I be? <laughs> you can be as obese as you want, baby. Break the scale. Yeah. I mean, okay. it, so, has be, uh, it has to be reasonable considering, you, I guess, if you travel a lot. You, he, he was noble, no, right? I'm noble, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, then, yeah. Saturn is a 1,200 pound you're you're pushing a cart. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so Saturn's chubby, uh, bulgy body is cloaked in uh, black robes. He has his bald head uncovered. In fact, he doesn't have eyebrows. He doesn't have hair anywhere. Okay. He's got no hair. Well, He's you, hairless. Like, embarrass the spider? He looks, he looks ridiculously soft. Like, he looks powder. soft they to the touch. They powder in his hometown. Yeah, no, no, he looks powdery <laughs> and soft. And he's got, a, he's got a larger than average head. He's got a big head. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. he, he walks with a sarcastic smirk on his face. Uh, he is a noble wizard. Uh, when we say noble, that means that he was actually exiled by his brother instead of murdered. Uh, and he happened to nab a spell book as he left. All right. Ooh. And Stacy, the aesthetics. And name. My name is Styx. Or Styx. It's Styx. Or in the Scottish. As, the, as in the river. <laughs> as in the river. River Styx. Pronounce the same but with an accent. Yeah. Styx. 
Um, all right, you wee lad. <laughs> Bring me the paper. All right, we gotta stop. Um, no, we're not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a paper down. Um, I repeat. <laughs> paper down. <laughs> Don't worry, he's just pissed. <laughs> okay, let's go. Paper. <laughs> no, no. Move that gargantuan cranium of yours and bring me the paper. It's if like you can. Sputnik. All right, he's gonna be crying himself to sleep tonight on his huge pillow. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm an apprentice, and I am trying to prove myself to the Prince of No, Thieves. that's not what I said. Give me your name and your aesthetics. Oh. I'm an apprentice, and I... <laughs> uh, sticks, and um, you see a skeletal, very small frame young man. Mm-hmm. You look Walking. like a stick. <laughs> no, no, uh. That's called subconscious. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. He is... Has a dark cloak on mm-hmm. with the hood up. You can see locks of tangled red hair coming down outside of the sides of the cloak. He has a scar on his right cheek, a diagonal small scar, fading, but it's there. He's rather quiet, but when he does speak, it's unfortunate. A little bit sarcastic. Okay. Now, I will give you the brief rundown of your culture so you would know it, because uh, you are from this area as well. So, one of the Nine Kingdoms, also known as the Black Land, this is Kavaria. For the black hair and black robes worn by the people, they are taciturn, their streets are quiet, the area is highly literate, with people writing poetry and decorating with skulls and having large graveyards. (laughs) Dwellings made of baked red mud or clay are inscribed all over with genealogies, blessings, rewards against curses, etc. They are vegetarian and very thin, (laughs) ascetic in practice, but not in prescription. They don't wish to kill, they want fate to do it. They don't particularly care about the animals. (laughs) They they just don't want to kill them. They want them just to die by natural means. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) If they uh, they kill something, they offer its blood to the prisoner, which is the local god. He is a prisoner, he's a prisoner of the other gods in a cell. Grits, okra, and tomatoes they eat here. They offer the husks and offscourings of plants and ritual sacrifice to the prisoner. For these things, they have also killed. For marriage, they seek to let love spark up by chance, where that's the sign of fate. So marriages are not arranged because they've been prearranged. Mm. They work as hard as their god does. What was that part again? What was that last part? They let marriages arise by chance without arranging them because they've been prearranged. <laughs> They're all about fate. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the cultural background of this kingdom. Now. You guys are walking along the road, going to the village called Therion that you know about. By the way, terminology, hamlets, no wall, very small. Villages have a wall and a church. Towns have a wall, a church, market, and cities have everything. Okay. Now you know. Good. So villages have some shops, like a, we'll have a blacksmith, mm. but pretty much. Why gotta be black? <laughs> <laughs> so you can get a, a decent end stay at a village. You don't have to stay at somebody's barn. So you're on your way there. You're on the road. Uh, this is a road that is mostly oak and pine along the edges. It's heavily wooded in this area. And you can see the mountains as you're ahead of you. So you're going, if that would be east. Yes, east toward the mountains. And the big city, Sela, is built into the mountains and the foothills. Hmm. And it's this big thing. Sela's, don't worry about Sela right now. It's just, it's always got pink fog in it from, don't worry about it. Um, it's a whole thing. It's, in, it's, a, whole it's thing. a whole thing. That's not getting into it. Yeah, you might be from there. If it's, it'd be on your background, I think. You've probably been there because you're thief, uh, thief guildmaster is there. Regardless, as you're going from your left hand side onto this really crappy, busted down road with broken wagons scattered along the side every now and then, and, and, a, and a skeleton of a long dead horse, comes a small young boy racing out of the woods. He's got dirt, perhaps blood on his face. Uh, His clothes are dingy. And he stops at the tree line and looks at you guys and goes, Help, I need you to come here right now. What is it, boy? And that's where we'll go get tacos.